Welcome to another Spark AR tutorial. In this video, we will be looking at how we can use emitters to be able to draw in 3D space. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a plane tracker because we're going to need to be able to track the that 3D space in question. And I'm just going to insert that like so. We're not going to parent anything to this, we're just going to use this for detection purposes. I'm then going to go to add object and I'm going to add a particle system. And I'm just going to rename this for um, my own sanity to drawing particles. You could just leave this as is. Uh, I just like to rename things for uh, convention purposes so I can always go back and know what I've done there and what it's for. And now we're just going to need to adjust some settings. So at the moment you can see this particle emitter is just emitting in a constant stream that's not uh, too uh, dissimilar to that of like fire. Uh, but I need to actually adjust these settings because I only want it to draw when my, the user tells it to draw, not to constantly keep firing. And not to fire with movement essentially because we need it to draw accurately and not just go all over the place. So I'm going to change its speed to be zero and its percent to be also zero. I'm going to increase its birth rate to around 400. I'm then going to open up the particles drop down option. I'm going to increase its lifespan to for the time being about in five seconds uh, but I can always increase this uh, later on and I'm going to keep the scale at 0 0.01 for now but again I might adjust that as we go through this. I'm going to tilt billboarding off so this gives me more options for uh, it to be able to move whilst it creates itself and I'm also going to change its shape. So by default we're using a particle which is a, uh, emitting as a, a plane and, but I actually want to change that shape to be something more 3D. So I'm going to change its shape to be a sphere. So it's now emitting this sphere shape. Although we can't see it doing anything at the moment because it's just constantly emitting on top of itself. And I'm also going to give it some angular velocity. So this again is optional depending on how you want this effect to look. So I'm just going to increase all of its values for myself to be 45, 45, 45. And if I um, sort of zoom in closely you can see that my uh, particle is sort of spawning on top of itself and moving and creating this kind of glitchy look because we've got no material applied. So at this stage I can go to my materials and I can create a new material for that like so and I can also adjust the radius of my sphere so I might actually adjust the radius of my sphere to be 1.5 just to make it larger. So at the moment we have our particles constantly being drawn in the middle of our screen uh, but we have no way of telling it to start or stop creating these so we want to make sure so it, this could continue on forever at the moment. So we need to make sure that we don't increase our birth rate too much because we don't want too many particles on uh, screen. Same with the lifespan, if we have a lot of particles and they're lasting on there for a very long time this will impact performance and frame rate on your device regardless of how good your mobile may be. So we're going to go to view and we're going to show our patch editor and we're going to start controlling our emission rate or our birth rate essentially. So I'm going to click on the little arrow next to birth rate on my particles. I'm now going to create our control system. So in this case, it's going to be a screen long press. This also could be an object press, but an object press would be more of a toggle rather than a uh, sort of an action that you're keeping your finger on. So just bear that in mind. So at the moment we have our sort of control so when we press our screen at the moment it's not going to do anything so we need to tell it that every time we hold our finger on our screen we want it to 
start drawing our particles and change its birth rate from zero to 400, i.e. start spawning and stop spawning once released. So to do that, I'm going to drag a handle from my screen long press, and I'm going to basically search for an if then else a patch. So this takes our uh, conditions, i.e. is it being pressed? And we want to make sure that if our uh, screen press is equal to 400, then the birth rate will start playing at 400. Otherwise it will be zero, therefore not emitting. So I can preview this by going to my little simulator and simulate touch and if I click and hold on the screen it should start uh, spawning that shape as soon as I release it it will stop if I want to see and make sure this is working I can just temporarily delete my drawing uh, particles patch and just check that it is uh, tracking so you can see as I move my camera around it's uh, constantly spawning these white spheres and they are disappearing after the set time that I've uh, allocated for it so I'm just going to uh, relink that quickly, like so. And now if we go to our simulator window and we hold simulate touch, we should see that our sphere appears. And once we release it after the period of time that we've set for the emitter, it should just disappear. So if I hold create one and just quickly change to simulate orbit and then create another one. Uh, I can have multiple paths drawn on my scene, um, but you can't uh, orbit your camera and simulate touch within the simulator window. You have to do this on your mobile device to test this, uh, unfortunately. So now we've got the most simple, if this is pressed, uh, start spawning particles at this rate. So 400 particles uh, per second, essentially. We can now add more controls to make this more uh, funky. So one of the things that I quite like to do when I'm doing this uh, exercise is I quite like to create some form of visual indicator to the user of where the emitted particles will be drawn from. So if I go to my finder, I've uh, just created uh, a simple uh, little target reticule and I've just found a rainbow texture of the internet. I'm just going to import those into my Spark AR project, like so. And I'm just going to add a rectangle canvas to my scene. So add a rectangle and this will create our canvas. And because this is in the center of our scene, which is exactly the same location as our emitter at the moment, I can simply create a new material. On this new material, change its texture type to be my reticule. I'm going to turn on alpha test because uh, it's just good practice to do so. I'm going to rename this material to be oh, target and I'm going to also rename my other material which is for my emitter to be just emitter and uh, actually make sure that I make that clean. So uh, what I wanted to have happen is I want this emitter to appear um, when our screen is not tapped and disappear when it is. So I'm going to drag from my screen long press. I'm going to add a switch. And I'm going to make sure that my pulse turned on is linked to switch turned on. And I'm just going to unlink that. And my pulse turned off is switched to pull turn off on my switch. Now on my rectangle, I'm going to select the visibility option. And if I link it up like so, it'll just disappear. Uh, what I need to do is I need to make sure this is inverted. So I just create a not patch in between. So if I go to my simulate touch now and I click and hold, my uh, rectangle will disappear and my particles will start emitting. Once I release, my a uh, rectangle should reappear and my particles will disappear once that time has passed. What I quite like to do here is actually give a bit of animation to this so it doesn't just pop in. 
So I tend to also add a animation uh, kind of effect. So I'm going to go with an animation patch like this. So when the pulse is on, I actually want oh, I want to link my pulse turned on to reverse and my pulse turned off to play. So I want this to be the opposite way around to what you may expect. I'm going to link my animation to a transition patch. I'm going to make sure that this transition patch is a uh, 2D um, vector for now. I'm going to select my rectangle and select my uh, scale values in my patch to add it to my patch editor. Now I'm going to link this up. So now when we uh, release our uh, screen press, it should now come back to life by uh, zooming and scaling up uh, from zero. I'm going to change the curve to be a bit of a bounce, just so it has this kind of more wow boing factor to it. <laughs> That's a technical term. And I'm now going to, I can now play about with my emitter more. So I'm going to go back to my emitter. I'm going to choose the emitter material. I'm going to change its texture to be that of my rainbow. And I could try playing about with a few fat things here. So I could change its shape if I wanted to. I could adjust its uh, rotation. So I could adjust all these three values here, all the angular velocity. I could adjust its lifespan. So if I wanted to appear on screen for a lot longer, I can just increase the number of seconds. Uh, I could apply force, I personally wouldn't, but you can again try that. And it's all about experimentation and playing about. So if you want to know how something works, deconstruct it and then reconstruct it. So I can select the drawing particles and my rectangle together by holding command and selecting the two values. And I could always move them to change my uh, origin spawn point. And that is essentially how you can create a simple drawing application in Spark AR. Now, there are additional things we could do. We could change the texture on our material with a uh, switch. So we could create object taps and then link that to a object switch and link that to the material texture value, uh, as you can see in previous tutorials on this channel. And they, and just uh, try playing about with different patches and combining things together to create your final crazy effect. So thank you for watching and remember if you want to support this channel to like and subscribe, share it around and if you want to support us on Patreon you can do. The link and details of all of which will be in the description down below. Thank you for watching.